I was actually a mile and a half from Westminster yesterday in meetings when it happened. And when I came out into the street, what struck me, first of all, was the constant stream of sirens you could still hear in the near distance. And secondly, how people in the street were calmly getting on with life pretty much as usual. Now, some of them would have been oblivious to what was happening, I'm sure. But in the age of the smartphone, it's not hard to imagine that most knew what was going on. I think it's an example, one, of people's resilience, uh, but also the sense in which we are, we are motivated by hope. And I think that's one of the reasons why, in the long term, terrorists will not see the lasting change their advocates are pushing for because there's no hope in terrorism. Well, it's interesting because I think you, you've been quoted as commenting that terrorism will not bring cities like London to their knees. No, it won't, because if you look at history, human beings are never satisfied with a new status quo that's been won through violence or suppression. We always want to look beyond that for a new way forward based on hope. And I think back to the, the great uh, Jewish psychotherapist Viktor Frankl, who endured the horror of German camps in World War II, but taught us that human beings can endure a great deal of pain as long as there's a purpose beyond the pain. And terrorists can't offer that. They offer no hope for the future. They only have a very blinkered vision of the past and a brutally incoherent understanding of the present. So I think for that reason, in the battle of hearts and minds, they're destined to lose.